in nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Pax vobis. Fratres Agnus Camus Peccata Nostra, ut aptissimus ad Sacra Mysteria Celebranda. Confitio Deo, Omnipotenti, Evovis Fratres, quia peccavi nimis, cogitatione verbo opere et insone. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Idio preco beata Mariam Semper Virginem, Omnes Angelus et Sanctus, Fratres Orare Prumea, Dominum Deum Nostrum. Misereato Nostri Omnipotens Deus, et demisis peccatis nostris, perducat nos ad vitam aeternam. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
Oremos. Deus qui nobis sub sacramento mirabili passionist memoriam reliquisti, tribu equesumus, ita nos corporus et sanguinis tui, sacra misteria venerari, ut redemptionis tui fructum in nobis jugites ensiamus. Qui vivis et regnas cum Deo Patre, in unitate Spiritu Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how the Lord your God led you for forty years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you, and know your inmost heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you, he made you feel hunger, he fed you with manna which neither you nor your fathers had known, to make you understand that man does not live on bread alone but that man lives on everything that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not become proud of heart. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who guided you through this vast and dreadful wilderness, a land of fiery serpents, scorpions, thirst, who in this waterless place brought you water from the hardest rock, who in this wilderness fed you with manna, that your fathers had not known. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ, and the bread that we break is a communion with the body of Christ. The fact that there is only one loaf means that though there are many of us, we form a single body because we all have a share in this one loaf. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat, they said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I, who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven. Not like the bread our ancestors ate, they are dead. But anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Just a few moments ago, we heard the words of that ancient psalm. The eyes of all creatures look to you, O Lord. And that's an expression of an instinct and a longing which is written into every human heart. And in the psalmist's mind, found a real focus in the revelation of God to the Jewish people. And today for us it finds an even sharper focus for all eyes look to the presence of Jesus in the sacrament of the most holy altar, the body and blood of Christ. There are many different ways of reflecting on this longing and on this revelation. Gregory the Great speaks of the church as the dawn. And it's a very interesting image. I think all of us know what it is to wake up at three o'clock in the morning and be anxious and be unsure of what the day will bring and in a way waiting for the light of the coming day, waiting for the dawn. And that's where Gregory places us. That yes, in and through the church, the darkness of the night begins to fade. And the works of darkness, the darkness as it is in the heart and the conscience of every one of us, can gradually clear. But we in the church, we here today, 
We are not the full light of the splendor of the sun in the day. We are still in that mixed zone of light and darkness, and we await the coming of the majesty of Christ in glory. We live with ambiguity. We live with sinfulness. We live in a realm of uncertainty in our behavior and everything that we see around us. But as we come before the Lord in this celebration of the Mass and in his abiding presence in his sacrament, we come before the fullest of the sunlight, here as sacrament, here as the foretelling of the fullness of life, which is our destiny. And that's why today's feast has such an important aspect of real hope for us. Yes, here we come fully into this sunlight of Christ. And here we find the warmth and the full splendor of all that we hope for and desires. And before him, like in no other place, we can, as it were, unfold ourselves and present ourselves to him, knowing that his light, his sunlight, can ease the darkness in every crevice of our being. Only before him and in his sacraments can we receive that great gift. I would like to suggest that you have this image of us living in the dawn and yet knowing and seeing in this sacrament, the full light of Christ. Have this image as we make our procession after Mass. We bring the Christ, the true light, into the still dusky dawn of our life and world today. Indeed, the very shape of the monstrance suggests that. It is there almost like a sunburst a great burst of sunlight, but at its heart is the sacrament of his body and blood. But this morning we also ought to reflect on from where this procession comes. And it comes from here. It comes from the celebration of the Mass. It comes from the way in which this sacrament creates the church. And here at this point, I'd just like to go back to another great figure, maybe the greatest figure in the church's reflection on this feast day, St. Thomas Aquinas. For it was he who petitioned the Pope to establish this as a feast for the universal church in the 13th century. And to help me and you to just continue this reflection for a moment, I'd like you to look in the Mass booklet that you have to the hymn that the choir will sing after Holy Communion. It's there on the page if you look through to that part of the Mass. And it is what we will hear are uh, the words of the hymn in Latin, O Sacrum Convivium, in quo Christus sumitur, mens in plato gratiae, et future nobis gloriae pinius datur. There's a handy translation on the other side of the page, but I'd like to just deepen that a little bit. So if we take the first line, here is the mass described as a sacred banquet, a sacrum convivium. 
And I think the word convivium is stronger than the word banquet. It, as you can see, it brings together two words, to live together, convivere, convivium. And so here in the Mass, we're being bound together into a new life. And another derivation of a word from this same Latin word, it is convivial. It's joyful. Not because the caviar is good, but because we are being drawn into the very body and life of Christ himself. Then the next line. In quo Christus sumito. Now, I think that word too can be deepened. You know, when you and I had our breakfast this morning, we ate whatever it was. For me, it was Weetabix and a banana, in case you're interested. But, and that's not an advert. But that food as he were, became part of me and gave me some energy. But when I receive the Eucharist, I become part of Christ. And I am, as it were, absorbed into Christ. He takes me in, a bit like a sponge taking in water. And I think that too is an interpretation we can put onto that word sumito. It's as, it's as if everything is drawn together in him, assumed into him. And that's a strong image for us to keep in mind. Mens in plato gratiae. So our minds are filled with grace. We begin to see the longer horizon of our destiny. No longer do we live just by the horizons of days, hope, or today's news, or tomorrow's predictions. But we live now with a hope that goes beyond those horizons and is certain. The present day is full of uncertainty. Mind, a mind filled with grace is full of sure hope in a certain future. And then the last line, et futuri nobis gloriae, Pinus dato. I think it's translated as a promise is given of our future glory. But just, we'll pause for a moment on the word pinus. It's a bit stronger than promise. It's a word that means a pledge. It's a pledge of love, a pledge of fidelity. Classical Latin uses the word penius to describe the children of a loving father and a mother. The children are the pledge of their love. And that's the strength of what we receive in the Eucharist. We become a pledge, a child, a promise, a manifestation of God's love for us. Now Thomas reflects very beautifully on this mystery of the Eucharist that we celebrate today. But I was struck by his starting point. Let me read this sentence to you. Since it was the will of God's only begotten Son that every person should share in his divinity, he assumed our nature. God's purpose is that every single one of us, every created person, will share in the divinity of Christ. And that, as some people like to say today, is awesome. There is a very interesting reflection in my mind on the emergence of Christianity in the Roman Empire. The question is asked, what new did the Christian revelation bring to the Roman Empire? And some are tempted to think it was this. It was the promise of divinity. Yet, the Roman emperor and the people of Rome 
believed that divinity was bestowed upon the emperor. So the idea that a human person would aspire to divinity was not the great radical newness of Christianity. But it was that the poorest, that the weakest, that the most downtrodden, that the most neglected, the slaves, those in prison for no reason, everyone would aspire and had this pledge of future glory in sharing in the divinity of Christ. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus. Amen. Credo in unum Deum. Oh, 
Party Francis of Men, a Vestrum Sector Featum, Accept Tardy Fiat of the Day and Partium on the Putin. The Shaky of Dominus, Sacrificium de Mandos Tuis, and that in the glory of the Roman is Sui, at its Elitat and Hopkin Hospital. Ecclesia to Equesimus Domini, Unitatis et Pacis Propitius Dona Concede, Quesum Oblatsis Muneribus Mystici Designato, Per Christum Dominum Nostrum. Amen. Dominus Vobiscum. Sagamus Domino Deo Nostro. Veredinium Magistum est, ecum et salutare. Nos tibi sempre tu bique gratia sacere. Domine sancte pater, omnipotens eterne Deus, per Christum dominum nostrum. Qui cum apostoli suis in novissima cena conversions, Saluti ferem crucis memoriam prosecutorus in secula. Anium sine macula se tibi obtulit, perfecte laudis munus acceptum. Co venerabili misterio fidelis tuis alendo sacrificas, ut humanum generis genus, quod continentu nos obis, una fides illuminet, caritatis una coniuga. Ad mens amicitur acipumus tam mirabili sacramenti, ut gratiae tue sua vitate perfusi, ad celestis forme imaginem transimus, propter quod celestia tibia que terrestria Canticum novo concinunt adorando, et nos cum omni exercitu angelorum proclamamus sine fine dicente.
te igito clementissime pater, per Jesum Christum filium tuum dominum nostrum, supplices rogamus et petimus, ut te accepta habeas et benedicas, hic dona, hic munera, hic sancta sacrificia illibata. In quimis quae tibi offerimus pro ecclesia tui sancta catholica, quam pacificari, custodire, adonare, et regere, dinieris, toto obe tararum. Una cum famolo tuo Papa Nostro Francisco, et ego, et ei indigno servo tuo, et omnibus orthodoxis atque catholici et apostolici fidei cultoribus. Memento Domini, famlorum faromum quae tuarum, et omnium circumstantium, quorum tibi fides cognita est et nota devotio, quo tibi offerimus vel qui tibi offerum sacrificium laudis, pro se suisque omnibus, pro redemptione animarum suarum, pro spe salutis et in columnitatis sue, tibi quae redent vota sua, eterna Deo, vivo et vero. Comunicantes et memoriam venerantes, in primis gloriose sempre virginis Mariae, drenicicis Dei et Domini nostri Iesu Christi, sed et beati Iosef, eustem virginis sponsi, et beatorum apostolorum at martyrum tuorum, Petri et Pauli, Andrei et omnium sanctorum tuorum, or meritis precibusque concedas, or in omnibus protectione tue muniamo auxilio. Anc igitor oblationem servitutis nostre, sed et cumte familiae tue quesumus domine, o placatus accipias, diesque nostre in tua pace disponas, atque abiterne damnatione nos eripi, et en electorum tuorum iubias grege numerari. Quam oblationem tuam Deus, in omnibus quesumus, benedictam, ad scriptam, ratam, rationabilem, acceptabilem quae facere dinieris, ut nobis corpus et sanguis fiant, dilectissimi filii tui, Domini nostri, Iesu Christi. Qui pridie quam patoreto, accepit panem in sanctis ac venerabilis manus suas, ed elevatis oculis in celo, a te Deum Patrem Suum Omnipotente, tibi gratias agens, benedixit, fregit, deditque discipulis suis dicens, accipite et manducate ex hoc omnes, Hoc est enum corpus meum quod provobis tradetum. Simili modo, posquam cenatum est, accipiens et hunc preclarum calice, in sanctas et venerabilis manus suas, item tibi gratias agens, benedixit, de ditque discipulis suis dicens, accipite et bibite ex eo omnes, hic est enim calic sanguinis mei, novi et eterna testamenti, qui provobis et promultis effundetur, in remissionem peccatorum. Hoc facite meam commemorazione. Mysterium Fidei Und 
Iliad Memories Domini, nos servi tui, sed et plebs tua sancta, eustem Christi, fili tui Domini nostri, tam beati passionis, nec non ab inferis resurrectionis, sed in celus gloriose ascensionis, offerimus preclare maestatis tui, de tuis donis et datis, ostiam pura, ostiam sancta, ostiam immaculata, panum sancte vitae eterne, et calicem selectis perpetue. Suprat pe, propitio ac sereno vulto respicere dinieris, ut accepta haberi, sicudi accepta haberi diniatus es, munare puri tui justi apel, et sacrificium patriarche nostre Abrahe, et quod tibi obtulit sumus sacerdos tuus Melchizedek, sanctum sacrificium, immaculatam ostiam. Supplices te rugamus omnipotens Deus. Iube heic preferi per manus sancti angeli tui in sublime altare tuum, in conspecto divini maestatis tui. Ut quot quot ex hac altare participationem sacrosanctum fili tui corpus et sanguinin subserimus, omne benedictione celesti et gratia repleamu. Memento etiam, Domini, famulorum famulorum quae tuarum, qui nos preces edernunt cum signo fide et domiunt in somno pacis. Ipsis Domino et omnibus in Christo quiescentibus, locum refrigeri, lucis et pacis, ut indulgias deprecami. Nobis quoque peccatoribus familis tui, de multitudine miserationem tuarum sperantibus, patem aliquam et societatem donare dinieris, cum tui sanctis apostolis et martiribus, cum Ioanne, Stefano, Mattia, Barnaba, et omnibus sanctis tuis, intra quorum nos consortium, non estimato meriti, sed venie quesimus largito admite per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Per quem heic omnia Domini, semper bona creas, sanctificas, vivificas, benedicis, et prestas nobis. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, es tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritus Sancti, omnis ono et gloria, per omnia secula, Seculorum. Amen. Precepti salutaribus maniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere. Libera nos quesimus Domine ab omnibus malis, da propitium pacem in diebus nostris, ut ope misericordiae tui adiuti, et a peccatus simus semper liberi, 
et ab omni putobationis securi expectantes beatam spem et adventum salvatoris nostri Jesu Christi. Jesu Christi, quid, quid existi apostolis tuis, pacem relinquo vobis, pacem meum do vobis, ne respicias peccata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tui, eamque secundum voluntatem tuam, pacificare et coadunari dineris, qui vivis ad renias in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper obiscum. Recum Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord.
Oremos. Fac nos quesumus Domine, divinitatis tui sempeterna fruitione repleri, quam preciosi corporis et sanguinis tui, temporalis perceptio prefigurat, qui vivis ad reignas, in secula seculorum.
O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our most gentle Queen and Mother, look down in mercy upon England, thy dowry, and upon us all who greatly hope and trust in thee. By thee it was that Jesus, our Saviour, and our hope was given unto the world, and he has given thee to us, that we might hope still more. Plead for us, thy children, whom thou dost receive and accept at the foot of the cross, O sorrowful mother. Intercede for our separated brethren, that with us no one true fold, they may be united to the Supreme Shepherd, the Vicar of thy Son. Pray for us all, dear mother, that by faith, fruitful in good works, we may all deserve to see and praise God, together with thee, in our heavenly home. Amen. Panem de cielo, prestidis dies, alleluia. Deus, qui nobis sub sacramento, mirabili passionis tue memoriam reliquisti, tribue quesumus, Et annos corporis et sanguinis tui, sacra mysteria venerari, ut redemptionis tui fructum, in nobis iugita sensiamus, qui vivis et reinas in saecula saeculorum.
Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her spouse most chaste. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time. Amen. Amen.